The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our final session of the um, Penn Foster Student Success Second Annual Fair. So I'm really, really excited to be here. We've had, this is the 36th session, and we've had over 1,500 participants. So I'm really, really excited. I haven't counted up the numbers since our um, 2 o'clock session, and no, since our noon session ended, and we were at 1483. So really excited about that. All the participation is simply amazing. My name is Nancy Moretti, and I'm going to be your host and presenter today. Before we begin, I just want to take a, a quick, um, a, a, do a quick housekeeping with you to ensure that everyone is ready and familiar with how to use GoToWebinar and the control panel. To access your control panel, you're going to see a little red box with a white arrow. If you click on that, that will either minimize or expand your control box. And within that, you're going to see a question box. So if you have any questions, please take the time to ask your question there. If there's anything you want to echo that I'm saying, please um, do that there. Okay? I'm going to try to make this an uh, interactive session, so I am looking for some participa participation from each of you. Um, so definitely share, okay? If you ask a question and I don't answer it, it's only because more than, well, I believe it was 150 people registered for this session. So there's going to be quite a few people here. So if you ask a question and it's not answered, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's because there's just so many questions coming up and I want to make sure we get through our presentation today. So if that's the case, please bring your questions to the student community, and I will be more than happy to answer them there. So before we get started, just to make sure that you're able to use that question box, can you jump in and let me know a little bit about you and why you're here at this presentation? Let me know where you're from, what made you um, decide to join me today. Excellent. I see a few of you sharing. Welcome. Stay at home mom, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania with us. Haley's here to learn. Excellent. Ohio, Virginia. Sarah's in the vet tech program. Excellent. Cassie wants to know what tools will um, assist her in success. We've got Kelly from California. Excellent. Well, welcome, everybody. Always a pleasure to see um, students and guests at sessions like this. So let's begin. So here's a little bit about me. My name is Nancy Moretti. I have about 28 years experience working in early care and education. I own a child care center in Smithfield, Rhode Island. In addition, I am the department chair of early childhood and general education here at Penn Foster. I truly believe that soft skills are needed for us in the work environment. It's needed definitely at working in early care and education, but it's also needed regardless of what career you're in. Having these skills will certainly take you places. So what are soft skills? I know many of you went to a session earlier today with Rachel Wexler. She talked quite a bit about soft skills. Um, she called them power skills, I believe. This presentation is probably going to overlap some of the things that she shared. Unfortunately, we didn't know that the other one was sharing the same type of topic. Otherwise, we would have done them on different days. But we have different research to share and different experiences. So I hope that between the two of us, you'll be able to mesh some, some of what we're sharing together. So let's move on and discuss a few definitions that I found about soft skills. Um, what do you, um, I'm sorry. Soft skills refer to the cluster of personality traits that people have. It's how we handle ourselves, how we communicate with others, do we respect others, what our body language is saying, what our work ethic is. So there's a variety of different things. They complement hard skills, which are technical requirements that you need in your career, and they're also important for success in an, in an organization. In addition to the definitions on this slide, I want to share that soft skills are a combination of interpersonal and personality traits that enhance an individual's interactions with people, um, with their job performance, and with career 
process. Soft skills are also defined as attitudes and behaviors to create interactions among, amongst individuals. And really, really important to have. Let's move on. I've got a little icebreaker for you. What do you think are the most important soft skills for workplace success? Just share your answers in the question box, and I'll echo a couple of them. Anybody want to share? Why are they important? Teamwork. Absolutely, Peter. Teamwork is so important no matter where you're working. Even if you work from home and you work as an individual, maybe you own your own business, from time to time you're going to have to work with others, right? You're going to have to network with others and get somebody else on the same page to assist you in doing some work. Cooperation. Absolutely. We need to be able to cooperate to be able to learn and share with each other, right? Dependability and responsibility. Those are definitely very, very important. We want, when your employer asks you to do something, he or she wants to know that you're going to be able to get it done, right? Uh, that they can count on you to get it done. Body language, yes, Brenda. Adaptability and flexibility. Oh, absolutely. No matter what job you have, you've got to be flexible. I've been in the fields of early care and education, as I said, for about 28 years now. And flexibility is so key, especially working with young children and their families, right? So those of you with child care, and I know I saw quite a few of you in that program, flexibility. Um, adaptation, yes, communication, all forms of communication, right? Yes. Losing that ethos-centered attitude. Absolutely, Cass, um, Cassie. We need to learn how to interact with other people. Even though we don't like them, right? We still have to be able to interact with them in a positive manner. Excellent. Thank you, everybody, for sharing. Feel free to continue to share. Many of those that you're sharing and that I've echoed are going to show up throughout this presentation today. So soft skills. Soft skills assist in handling interpersonal relations. They assist in making appropriate decisions. They assist us in communicating effectively and in leaving a good impression, things that we need to do in the workplace, right? In addition to what I just shared and what you see on the slide, can you share some other reasons why soft skills are important? Anybody want to share? We want people to like you and respect you, right? We want to, teach, uh, we want to treat people the way we want them to treat us. When we speak, we want someone to listen, and we're going to do the same for them. Anybody else want to share? Why are they important? You want to want to go to work every day, and she capitalized that second want. Absolutely, Kathy. We want to go to work every day, right? We've got to remember why we started working where we were working and get back to that point. That passion needs to be there, and when we set these soft skills, and the people that we work with have these soft skills, that's the biggest, uh, the biggest part of making the day a success, right? It brings harmony to the workplace. Yes, Wendy. You want people to be open to talk to you. Absolutely. If somebody has a concern, I want them to feel that they can come to me. I don't want them to be afraid to come to me. Excellent. Excellent So what's everybody. So there are quite a few different types of communication skills that are really, really important. We've got oral and written communication. Um, effective communication is the process of transmitting clearly understood messages between all involved parties. Effective communication is vital to business. It allows you to give required attention and protocol to certain concepts that you need to uh, point out to others. It's important to know what, when, and how you want to communicate to others. Improving our communication skills is an ongoing process. You know, when you first start in a career and you haven't really emailed in a while, you might be a little rusty at first, right? If you've never done an oral presentation and you're doing it for the first time, you're going to be a little nervous or a little scared. I was telling Sherry when we were on the phone this morning, I would say before you all logged in, that I'm nervous about today. These are the first five minutes or so. I am paranoid. I'm nervous about speaking. What if people ask questions that I don't know the answer to? Um, but you really got to try to forget about that, right? Try to filter that out and 
just know that you know your topic and that you're able to present it. The ability to communicate effectively is extremely important in a person's success and in the workplace. Yes, you need to know when to filter things out, right? Communication of, info of information is a primary resource in every business. So we all need some communication skills, even if we work alone. Verbal communication is the ability to convey messages with the use of words. It's reading, listening, speaking, and writing. All those skills are very, very important. Verbal communication. Um, the process of verbal communication is using words to send a message. You need to identify which words are appropriate, who you're talking to, so you're not sharing too basic or too above the person's level. You don't want to share intimidating or arrogant messages with people, right? You want to use proper English and proper grammar. You want to watch the speed in the tone of your voice. And I know I speak very loud, and I know some people tell me that I talk very fast. Um, and I think I talk very fast when I'm passionate about something. That's when I get louder and faster. And I try to remember that my accent might be different than others, so I might have to slow it down a little bit. But I have to keep reminding myself of that. Another, reading. Reading is letters, memos, emails. So really important to know how to read. That's a part of communication, reading, and knowing what responses you need to respond to. Do you have to say thank you to every email that comes across your desk? Or do you pick and choose? So when do responses need to be communicated? Another part of oral and communication is listening, active listening. Um, for communication to take place, the receiver must actually listen and understand the message that is being told to them, right? Active listening provides the speaker with feedback. Maybe a nod, a smile, some type of response. That way there, the person that you're talking to knows that you are actively listening. Maybe you can do some open-ended questions, asking questions that requires more than a yes or no response. So if you're not quite sure what the person is talking about, ask the question. That way there, they can share a little bit more detail about it. It also allows more information to be retrieved. Okay. It shows a general interest. It helps build stronger relationships with the person that you are um, speaking with. Um, they're going to say, wow, this person really listened to me. It's really going to uh, build that level of trust that you have when you're asking some additional questions when they're speaking with you. The next thing I want to talk about is speaking. How well one speaks may prove to be a determining factor in the degree of his or her success in many careers. Speaking skills are equally as important in one-on-one -on -one conversations as they are when speaking to a group. So really, really important for you to um, take that into consideration. We also use electronic media for written communications, right? This is definitely commonplace of uh, electronic media. Are you recording yourself? Are you doing recordings and posting them up on YouTube, on Snapchat, right? So we're, we're doing that for our friends. How are you doing it? How do you sound? Okay. Um, really important for us if we're doing a YouTube video or a tutorial or of us as instructors as we're doing tutorials for your courses, right? We have many of those in your courses. What do they sound like? Are you able to understand us? So just remember that that's, com that's becoming more and more common and more and more people are using electronic media and speaking with people um, through the forms of electronic media. Let's continue on. Nonverbal communication. As I'm talking right now, my hands are flying. If any of you, if I had my camera on right now, you wouldn't be seeing my face. You'd be seeing my hands flying all over the place. If I was doing a, uh, a video where you could see me, I'd have to sit on my hands, to be perfectly honest with you. And then if I'm sitting on my hands, I have a hard time talking. And I'm not Italian. I'm married to an Italian. I'm not an Italian. I'm French. Um, 
but I speak with my hands. My husband laughs at me all the time and says, wow, what would you do if you lost an arm? And I don't know. I was in a fling um, a couple of years ago for a few months, and when I was in that fling, I had a hard time talking. I truly, truly did. My arm kept on hurting because I kept on moving it. So finally, my doctor put me in a pillow fling, um, so I couldn't move it. Um, it's hard not to do it. Oh, but Brenda, I'm probably worse than anybody you know. It's horrible. It's horrible. But anyway, nonverbal communication. Really important. People are looking at your body language when you are talking to them. Um, is your body language saying the same thing as your words that are coming out of your mouth, right? Really, really important that we're expressing our, ourselves with the same facial expressions, using that same body language. Are you um, sitting in your chairs like the people in the picture right here? They actually look all very, very bored, don't they? They're just waiting for something. It looks like they've been waiting for hours and they're bored. You know, if they're at my presentation and, I, and they're in the front row, I'm thinking, wow, I need to get this presentation done and over with. Everyone's bored, right? So nonverbal communication really tells us a lot. You can learn a lot. You can learn if people are listening to you. Um, you want to maintain eye contact. You know, every now and then we glance away. Of course, it's common to glance away after you're talking with somebody. But when you're in an interview or you're um, meeting with your employer, make sure that you maintain that eye contact. Okay? And your personal appearance, appearance really, really important. Do you dress for success when you go to work? Do you, um, you know, are you looking to climb the corporate ladder? Are you dressed appropriately for work? Or do you say, oh, I showered yesterday, I don't need to shower today, and you go in and you have to wear a hat to work because your hair is such a mess. You know, maybe that's okay depending on which job you're doing. And I'm not going to say that some nights I take a shower and I don't do it in the morning. And, you know, but I make sure that I have that personal appearance that I'm so where I'm supposed to be. Um, if I'm sitting at home, I'm going to have my sweatpants on and who cares what I look like, right? An inside-out T-shirt doesn't matter to me. But when I'm going to work, I make sure that my clean, my clothes are clean. Um, hopefully they're pressed. Um, I'm not a good ironer. I don't, I don't like to iron. Uh, if they get wrinkled in my luggage, they tend to stay with wrinkled. They go, they go into even out as the day goes on. But if I was out there looking for a job or looking to climb the corporate ladder, I would make sure that I was pressing my clothes, right? Um, did you brush your teeth? Did you use deodorant? Is your perfume too strong? You know, I use the same perfume each and every day. I don't smell my perfume anymore. But every now and then people tell me, wow, Nancy, I really smell your perfume when you walk into the room. It smells so good. What are you wearing? And that reminds me that, oops, maybe I put too much on today. And I ask, oh, is there too much on? And some people say, well, yeah, because I have allergies. But most people say, oh, no, 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 that's not the case. But if they commented on it, sometimes I wonder, right? So dress for success. Absolutely. Be neat and clean. Dress for the job that you are working, right? My daughter just received a good job. She just received a promotion at her place of employment. She comes to work at Chest Down Friday, so Fridays they can wear jeans. She never wears jeans. She's always in a skirt and a jacket. Um, and no one else wears a skirt and a jacket. They wear slacks and a shirt. Um, but she's just always dressed up. And six months after getting a job where she's working, she's already gotten a promotion. And to have doubled her salary. And I believe that the most of that is because she dresses for success. People know her. Um, you know, she's outgoing. She's friendly. She has many soft skills. And she dresses for success. So let's talk about email etiquette. I know we, talk, we touched upon this when talking about communication. But really important to... Um, to consider email etiquette. Very, very important. Uh, popular for both internal and external communication. Really important that you include something in the subject line. And I know from time to time we all send something. Um, Outlook luckily tells me, oh, there's nothing in the subject line. Do you want to send anyway? But when I use Gmail, it doesn't remind me um, that there's nothing in the subject line. And I use Gmail at my child care center and in my personal life. So sometimes I forget, but really important that you uh, write something there. Try not to write hi or hello or urgent, important or test. Um, you want people to read it without thinking, wow, 
you know, I mean, certainly if it's urgent, maybe you're having a meeting in 15 minutes and it just came up and you've, you've got to have a meeting in 15 minutes, then you might want to do urgent or important. But other than that, unless it truly is urgent or important, you probably should avoid putting that in the subject line. Um, and only tag those emails as urgent or, you know, read now, but you truly need them to read it right away, okay? My, my research that I um, did said to avoid the use of emoticons. Well, I tend to end my emails. And, um, Sherry's here today, and she probably can attest to it. And those of you who I've emailed over the past um, probably have seen it too. I tend to end my emails with smiles. And that's what I write, smiles. Um, or sometimes I put a smiley face. Um, even though research says you shouldn't do things like that, I think it's a way to share my personality because I... Working in early childhood, it's always a big old smiley face when I write on children's report cards. When I, you know, say goodbye to somebody, and that smile comes on. Oh. Remember to use proper layout, spelling and grammar. Put that spelling and grammar check on your Outlook or your um, email platform. That way, there it automatically sends for you. At a closing, I'm going to thank them for listening. Thank them for reading your email. Okay. Follow up when necessary. If you're looking for a response and you don't get a response, wait a little while, depending on how urgent it is for you to get that response. Follow up and ask about it. Okay? If somebody's asking for a response, make sure you read that whole email to make sure um, that they want you to respond and say, yes, I've read this email. Add a signature line. You can have that already set up in your email that way you don't have to type it up all the time. Another thing. Think before replying to all. Do you have to reply to all? Can you just reply to the sender? Can you reply to the sender, maybe one or two people? What's going to happen if you reply to all? Or is 500 people worth your feet on this and you're just saying thank you? You know, people are going to say, well, who is this and why is she doing that? Okay. Plan, identify, and write emails when there's a purpose for it. Don't write it just because, especially in the business world, okay? That's just a few of my thoughts about email etiquette. Did, did I miss anything? Anybody want to jump in and share anything? With answering the telephone, it's really important, especially for business purposes, that you are trying to look, um, answer within the first, second, maybe third ring. You don't want it to go much more than that. People start getting a little annoyed, right? You want to start by, oops, I'm sorry, start by saying, hello, this is Nancy, or hello, you reached the education department, or good morning, just for kids, how can I help you? So have an opening, okay, so when you answer that phone, they know that they've reached the place that they were supposed to reach. Identify yourself, let them know who they're talking to. So, hi, you reached just for kids, this is Nancy Moretti, uh, is what I do when I'm at my child care center. So identify the company. Smile when you speak. When you're smiling when you speak, it, the, the person on the other end of the phone thinks you're happy. Okay? They can hear. They can hear that smile in your voice. Do not place someone on hold without asking for permission. And wait for their answer. How many times have you called someplace and they say, can you hold, please? And they put you on hold before you have a chance to even say, no, this is an emergency. It's happened to me. I tried calling my son at work just recently um, to tell him that my husband was getting transported to the, to the hospital, that he had called 911, and I was put on hold. Meanwhile, I'm in the rescue, and I didn't want to be put on hold. If they couldn't talk to me. They shouldn't have answered the phone, was my thought. Um, but they put me on hold, and I was a nervous wreck as I was waiting five to ten minutes. So if they would have said, can I put you on hold, I would have said, it's an emergency, just have Josh call me back. Um, so it's really important that um, make sure that you get that okay before putting people on hold. When you're making a call, again, identify yourself, okay? Hi, this is Nancy Moretti from Just for Kids. I'm returning your phone call. Or, hi, this is Nancy from Penn Foster. I have a message to give you a call today. 
don't eat while you're on the phone. Make sure you're not eating as you're talking. Make sure there's not a loud noise in the background as you're um, doing things like that. If you're using a speaker phone, make sure everyone in the room knows that, that you're on a speaker phone, that somebody else is in the room with you and they can hear what the, um, the person that you're speaking to is sharing. Okay. Um, if you're using a speaker phone, try to use a private room. Find someplace private. I know I tend to use a speaker phone because I um, tend to multitask. I'm listening, uh, but when I'm in a meeting, I tend to have my speaker phone on so I can be looking at what they're talking about and use my hands as I'm talking. Um, so I tend to use one. What about voicemail messages? Really important to keep that message brief. How many times have you listened to a voicemail and you had to listen to it three or four times to hear everything that was said? Or worse than that, it got timed out. The person called back three or four times because they had so much to share. Really important to try to keep that brief. Okay. Um, share your name, the purpose of your call, and leave a return phone number. I always recommend that you speak slowly and clearly. Uh, and repeat that telephone number more than once. Yes, Kathy, I agree. Owning a child care center, I get so many uh, messages for child care. And when I want to call people back, sometimes it's one number off because they said it so fast. Right? So make sure you say it slowly and you say it twice. Um, the same thing with your student ID. If you're leaving a message for us, let us know your student ID. And saying it twice might be very helpful as well. And as far as your voicemail greeting, keep it friendly and professional. I call people over the years, and their voicemail message just turned me right off that I did not leave a message saying, I'd like to give you, you know, I'd like you to come in for an interview. On paper, they were wonderful, but their voicemail message, maybe it complained swears or a song with um, foul language, um, it just was a turn off. So make sure that especially when you're looking for a job or when your supervisor or manager may be calling you that your voicemail is professional. It can be cute. It can be your children um, chatting on it. Um, but make sure it's not um, something that would make another person frown upon. Lots of people echoing some of the things that I'm sharing. Yes, you don't want it to sound offensive. Absolutely, Kathy. That was the board I was looking for. And then there's positive versus negative communication. On this slide, here's an overview of both of them. I just want to share, you know, positive communication, negative communication, really, really important that when you're communicating with people, not to communicate in anger, right? If I'm upset about something, I'm not going to pick up the phone and give you a call. I'm not going to go into your office and talk to you when I'm upset. I'm going to do it until I'm no longer upset. It, it gives me a chance to calm down and to think about why I was upset, about what happened, and I think it allows me to forgive faster because I'm not going there when I'm upset when the levels are going to be high because then it would become a heated discussion. So I tend to wait until I'm no longer upset or um, feeling personal about what happened. So positive communication really tells what can be done. This is what we need to do, right? This is how we can do it. If I think that, um, if I think that what you're asking me to do can't be done, I'm going to try to say, you know what, I understand what you want me to do, but I really don't think we can do it. What about doing this? So try to suggest alternatives, okay? Um, you want it to be helpful and encouraging. You want to stress the positive. You don't want to use words like I can't, I won't, I'm unable to, okay? Mm -hmm. And you want, you don't want to stress the negative. And I am so sorry. Somebody um, found my typo, Kelly. Um, what does blaming, blaming home mean? Well, it doesn't mean anything. That meant 
a blaming tone. You don't want to use a blaming tone. That's definitely a typo. Here I am talking about um, typos, and I made one on my slide. So you don't want to use a blaming tone, right? Next is courtesy and interpersonal skills. Again, really, really important. When people are describing you, what would you want them to say about you? Would you want them to say, oh, she's positive and honest. You can definitely trust her. She's courteous. She's helpful. She's happy. She's friendly. She's got a, a level of empathy. And she's punctual and motivated. Aren't those the skills that you would want people to share when they're talking about you? You know, oh, I've never met Nancy. Can you tell me a little bit about her? Uh, you certainly want them to share some positive things about you, don't you? So courtesy involves mirrors, etiquette, business etiquette as well as personal etiquette. Um, you know, do you say please and thank you when you're asking people for help? Are you respectful to others? Do you have a sense of humor? I mean, there's so many additional skills that we could put up here. Do you have a sense of humor? Are you nurturing and empathetic? Do you have a level of self-control? Do you know when to walk away? Are you patient? Are you warm to others? Do you have an I can attitude? Are you smiling? Do you smile a lot? Are you punctual? Positive attitude can really make a difference um, between getting hired and getting fired. We really want to think about positive, um, positive things. Think about those of you who attended my first session on Monday at 10 a.m., your passion, let that passion for why you took that job, why you applied at that job, let it shine through. Next slide, motivation, dependability, reliability, flexibility, and creativity. Oh, very, very important. Motivation is what pushes us to achieve our goals, right? Oops, sorry about that. Self-motivation is the simplest form. We want to be self-motivated to get things done, right? Dependability and reliability mean that you demonstrate that you're responsible behavior. You demonstrate that you're one person that's going to get things done. We talked about this a little bit earlier. When your boss asks you to do something, he or she knows that you're going to get it done and you're going to get it done in a timely manner. Do you fulfill your obligations? Do you behave consistently and predictably? It says your, your employers say, you know what, I never know if she's going to get things in on time. Sometimes she's so reliable and the next time she's late. There's, there's no, um, no consistency for her. Do you follow through on commitment and meet deadlines? Are you punctual with your attendance? Excellent tip off that she's uh, always punctual. Do you attend to details? Do you check your work to ensure that all essential, essential details have been considered? So sometimes being the first one to get things done, if what you did is incomplete, you know, meeting those deadlines, if what you did is not correct, you haven't checked your work, Sometimes you're better off asking for extra time, right, to make sure it's done and done right. Let's talk a little bit about flexibility. This means that you're willing to be adaptable, to try something new, to accept change. Change is hard for people. I've been, um, I'm getting older and older, and the older I get, the harder change is getting for me. I always thought that I embrace change. Um, but the older that I'm getting, the harder it is to accept those changes, especially when I think what we're doing is already working. If it's working, why fix it, right? But I know, as a growing organization, change is going to happen. So we need to, we need to remember that and be prepared for that. We need to be flexible. Flexibility is about being reliable, but not too rigid, right? You've got a schedule. You've got deadlines, but, but you've got to be flexible. If you thought that, you know, today I'm doing these three items, these are my top three, and then your boss asks you to do something else, you know, share with them. 
I've already got this top three that I'm working on. I don't know how I'm going to squeeze this in. How important is this? You know, okay. Oh, it's very important. You need it right away. Okay, I'm flexible. I'll do that first, and then I'll get to these other things. So really important to be flexible. And then creativity. You know, this involves thinking as well as sharing and producing. Maybe you've got some ideas. Maybe you're in a meeting and they're talking about um, a new initiative, and you've got ideas for that initiative. You don't know how to implement it. Um, maybe it's not your role to implement it, but you want to share those ideas, okay? Let your boss know, you know what, I've got these ideas. I don't know how we could implement it, but what about this? And what about that? Um, so let that creativity at work shine through, okay? Definitely share your ideas. Integrity and in work ethics, really, really important. You know, integrity involves being honest, being ethical, having high morals, personal values, and doing what's right. You've got to do what's right because it's the right thing to do, not because your boss is looking at you, not because your boss is watching you, right? Um, at Penn Foster, I live more than th um, almost 300 miles away from many of my, my full-time employees. And you know what? I think they all do what's right. They're all doing their job. I don't have to sit there and worry about everyone's rule all the time because I think that they all act with integrity, which is really, really important. Otherwise, how could I be in the role that I'm in living so far away from them, right? Um, and let's talk a little bit about work ethic. What, what's motivating you to do your work, right? Your boss hired you to do an eight-hour-a-day shift or a 40-hour-a-week shift. Are you working those that many hours? Are you, oh, no one's watching, taking extra breaks, um, goofing off, not following your instructor instructions or your job um, description? Um, so really important that we're, we're doing what we need to do, right? We're there for the job. Um, I've got to be here eight hours. I'm going to get my eight hours of work done, and then I'm going to do those other things that I wanted to do today. Um, another thing is, the equipment at work, it belongs to work. My work computer is right here on my desk. I take it home with me. I don't use it for my part-time job. I don't use it for my schooling. I try to use it just for work. And that's, again, part of work ethic that I think that I don't want to ruin my computer doing my personal things. What if I get a virus because I'm downloading a paper from another college that I work at? Or, you know, so really important that you think about that, um, using the copy machine at work for personal use, and things like that really fly, um, tie right into your work ethic. Some additional um, work ethic ingredients are punctuality, and somebody's talking about always being punctual, so having a positive, helpful attitude, being a valuable team member, having some great energy, a high level of initiative, high trust level, um, positive attitude, you're able to collaborate, you've got some nice communication skills, um, all of these things just go right into your work ethic. What about initiative? Initiative largely um, is being able to work on your own, right? Can you take a, a step back and see the big picture? Can you act on what you see using common sense and knowledge to guide you? Do you go the extra mile? Absolutely, Kale, uh, Callie. That initiative, uh, really, do you take that initiative to make the place of your employment better, right? to help improve the place that you're working? What are you doing to help them? Because if they're successful, you're going to be successful if you're doing the right things, right? And that's what we want. Problem solving, critical thinking, and decision making, all very important components. Are you able to identify problems, evaluate solutions, weigh the risks and the benefits, and make logical decisions.
the ability to use knowledge, facts, and data to solve problems is going to certainly assist you in your workforce. Employers value the ability um, for, for their employees to help develop solutions to problems. You know, if somebody comes to me and says, there's a problem with this, or there's a problem with that, I like to find out what their thoughts on are on how to fix it. Because I'm probably working on fixing three other things or five other things. So if I get somebody else's ideas, well, that sounds like it's going to work. Let's go for it. Let's give it a try. You know, um, sometimes we have to have a meeting and brainstorm together. But sometimes, if somebody has a solution that's going to work, and they were willing to share that, it really um, gives them a good check mark, right? You get a star for that, um, and it's remembered by your employer. Somebody mentioned teamwork earlier. Teamwork and networking really, really important. Lots of skills um, that fall into here, and these are all just listed on the slide. I'm not going to go through and read all of them. But the majority of all jobs uh, require us to work with other employees or to work with customers, right? So day in and day out, you might be working with people. So it's really important that we are on the same team, that we're able to communicate with each other. Um, effectively, okay. Um, teamwork involves building collaborative relationships. Relationships, having um, good teamwork skills, really can help to contribute to um, ideas and suggestions. It helps for a good working relationship amongst employees. When you go to work, you want to be there, right? You don't want to say, "Oh, I don't want to see this coworker of mine." So really, really important that we have that teamwork effort. Um, I tell people, if you don't like somebody that you work with, try to find something good about that person. Try to find something positive about that person. And that's what I do. I'm going to tell you, I don't like everybody, uh, but I find something that I like about them, right? Um, and I try to think about that when I'm thinking about the person. You know, this person might be a little rough around the edges, but she um, is great with the children at our child care center. The parents love her. She's not good with the, the adults, but she's great with the children. So when I'm thinking about her, I'm thinking about how wonderful she is when she's working in the classroom with children. Having loyalty absolutely can certainly assist you. So find something good about everybody, right? There's got to be something good about everybody. Otherwise, that person wouldn't still be working with you, right? More than likely, they would have left or been asked to leave. Let's talk about networking. This involves talking with friends, family members, acquaintances, um, about your employment goals, about your interests, and about your desires. Okay? How many of you are on LinkedIn? This is a wonderful networking tool for professionals. You can get onto LinkedIn and you can connect with other people who are in the same field as you, whether you know them or not. They're in the same field as you and they're going to allow you to follow them. They're going to follow you back. You can share um, similar articles, similar um, quotes. You can learn a lot. I, I'm on social media. I have over, on LinkedIn, I have over a thousand friends. Of that thousand friends, I probably know maybe a hundred of them. But I'm going to tell you, if I was looking for another job, I could find one tomorrow. I get emails and messages all the time saying, hey, we're looking for somebody to work in Boston as this. Are you interested? Do you know anybody? Or we're looking for somebody. Uh, we're opening a new center in Rhode Island. Or, you know, this college is hiring. I get messages at least once or twice per week from people in my LinkedIn account asking me if I'm interested in a position. So if I do, I can find something. So really, really important, if you don't network on LinkedIn, network. Get out there. Create a, a professional page and connect with other people who are in the same career as you are or in the career that you want to be in so you can make some nice, nice connections. You don't need to know them face to face in order to network and share with them. 
So it's not always what you know, it's who you know, even if you only know them um, via LinkedIn. Networking is the key to unlocking hidden, the hidden job market. When you're networking with others, you're going to find out about positions before they even post it. Okay, so a great, great way for you to um, find out about some positions that might be posted um, and start to apply for them before everybody else starts to apply. So get that cover letter um, ready. That way, there as soon as it's posted, you can apply. What about leadership skills? Another one that's really, really important. Um, you want to show your leadership skills, especially if you want to be a leader. Not everybody wants to be a leader in the workforce, but you know, even as a veterinary assistant or a teacher assistant, um, trying to think of different career opportunities that many of you share that you are in. Um, no matter what you are, you want some leadership skills, right? You want the you want to people, your customers to think that, well, this person knows what she's doing. Peter, graphic design, yes, Peter, you, you've got to take on some leadership skills here, right? Make sure that you know exactly what your customer is looking for. You want to, you would need to work well with others because there's gra graphic designers all over the place, right? If they don't work well with you, they're going to go someplace else, and you don't want them to do that. You've got to be trustworthy, you've got to be ethical, you've got to be focused. And you've got to have a good communication skill with, um, with your customers. So no matter what field you're in, it's really important that you have these skills. Whether you want to be the manager or you just want to excel in your current role, having leadership skills is certainly going to help you. Moving right on, stress management. Um, if you have stress, you've got to find out what's causing that stress, right? How can I get rid of some of the stress. Sometimes we've got positive stress, the stress that causes us to accomplish a task. You know, I needed to get this PowerPoint presentation done. I was a little stressed. It's not going to get done on time. So I continue to need to work on it until it was done. Okay. Um, negative stress is a type of stress that makes you emotional or illogical. We don't want that. Um, that really um, can result in anger, depression, distrust, fatigue, changes of appetite, and physical weakness. So if you're finding that you have too much negative stress, that's when you really need to say, what's going on here, right? What can I do? What do I need to change? Because something's not working. So I recommend that you set some goals to make that change. You can't. Um, you can't always make all changes quickly. Not all changes are easy to make, right? Um, but it's really important that you try to make those changes, even take baby steps to making those changes. You can get rid of some of that negative stress. Focus on your passions, remember? Remember that, that, that meeting we had the other day um, on Monday? Focus on those passions and try to get rid of that negative stress. The next one I'm going to talk about is time management. And I'm taking a different um, focus here. Typically when you see time management, you'll see a clock on the slide or something like that. But when I think of time management, I think that I want to manage my time. And I think about smart goals when managing my time, especially if I have a lot of things done to do. I try to break my task into simpler, smaller tasks. I try to make a list of what needs to be done. And I try to prioritize that list. And that list, because I'm flexible, is going to continuously change. I might last tonight, make a list saying, this is what I need to do tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, I'll wake up and say, OK, I need, I need to shift this list around. Okay? Um, but I, I've got the due dates listed next to them. I use my calendar and Outlook and Google to alert me of due dates and things like that. Um, so I make sure that my due dates are done on time. But when you're thinking time management, you know, set goals for yourself. Um, you want to achieve everything that needs to be done, right? So you need to be specific. What needs to be done? How am I going to do that, right? So what needs to be done? You want to make it measurable. Really important. Um, when do you need to get this done by? Okay. Um, 
a crucial goal for achievement, to be able to progress forward and toward your goal. All goals need some form of objective of measuring what you need to do to stay on track. What about achievable? You don't want to do unrealistic goals, right? Um, you want to because they're just going to demotivate you. If you know that you're not going to reach that goal, you're going to get demotivated, and it's going to cause stress, which you don't want. They need to be relevant. How are you going to get this done? Okay. Goals themselves don't create happiness for us, but getting those goals achieved and being done, that's what gets us happy makes us happy, right? What's your goal? You're all here. You're probably most of your goals are to earn your degree, earn your diploma, or earn your certificate, right? And you're working towards that. You're taking these classes. You've got these goals. Um, you've got some relevant goals this, to assist you in your career to um, either get you a new career because you're looking for a change or to open new doors for you. So that seal of approval. And you've got to set deadlines, okay? So you've got to, um, it's got to be well-timed. So really think about setting deadlines for your goals. So it's going to assist you in um, that time management skill. Just remember, employers want employees that are responsible, responsible ethical, team-orientated, and have that level of communication, interpersonal skills, and problem-solving skills. That's what they're looking for. So just a quick little overview um, of the skills that are needed. Communication, courtesy and interpersonal skills, motivation, dependability, reliability, flexibility, and creativity, integrity and work ethic, problem-solving, critical thinking, and decision-making, teamwork and networking, leadership skills, stress management, time management, and professionalism. Uh, these are the skills that are needed for you to be successful. And I'm sure many of you have many of these, if not all of these. Does anyone want to add? I mean, there's so many tough skills. I couldn't list them all. I was doing my research, and I found one article that listed, I think, 60 different soft skills. And I said, wow, let me try to narrow it down to those that will fit into an hour and those that I find to be really, really important. Anybody want to jump in and share? Did I miss any of the skills that you think are needed for your success? Respect, absolutely. We've got to respect each other. I don't think this list in here, but I think I didn't mention that when I was talking about uh, work ethic. Patient, absolutely. I did not say that one, especially working in uh, my field of early care and education. Right? Those of you working, with, when you're working with people, you've got to be patient. Customer centric, yes. Technical skills, very, very important. Technical skills are typically um, known as hard skills instead of soft skills, but they're still very, very important. The ability to work independently, determination. Independently at times. Okay, no problem. But independently, so some people have to work independently all the time, right? You don't need constant supervision. We want people that we can trust. Excellent thoughts, everybody. I think I was able to echo just about everything that everyone shared, and I think I answered every question that came up. If there was a question that came up, please feel free to um, share it again if I did not ask yet. Okay, Cece said, when typing my email, is there anything more that I should add in my email signature? Well, Cece, it really depends. If it's a personal email, probably not. I would just write my name. Um, here at my Child Care Center, I write Nancy Moretti. Um, child care owner director. My personal email address just has just my name. Um, here at Penn Foster, I write my Penn Foster email address and our address. So I think it really depends on 
what you're doing it for. I'm also a student, so on my student email address, I always write the course that I'm in, my student ID, and that I'm a student. I write um, student, comma, HS511, and the section number, and then my student ID, so my professor knows who I am. Thank you, Kathy. I was the chair of this week's um, presentation, so thank you so much. Um, it's been a fun, exhausting, rewarding week. I'm not going to um, not be able to sleep uh, for a while. It's uh, very, very exciting. I've had lots of support from our marketing team and my, my, my department. Um, everybody has really worked very, very well together to put this year together. So these are my references that I used in today's presentation. And I want to thank you all. It's kind of bittersweet, but I want to thank you all for joining us for this career fair, career and student success fair. It's been a lot, lot of work. We've been planning for it since December, uh, December of last year. It finally all came together. I'm really, really excited. Glad that it's done. Um, those of you in early childhood, you'll see another one in early for early childhood in October. Um, all focus related to ECE, and then we'll do another one in April again, very similar to this year. So really, really lots of work, but exciting, definitely exciting. Um, I want to remind you all to print your certificate. You can download that right now if you want it by going to the handout tab. If you're um, okay with waiting, you should get an email that will come to you with your certificate. Click on that email link and you can print your certificate. If that link is not working, I recommend that you copy it and paste it into an internet browser to be able to open that up. Um, in that same email, you're going to get a link to a survey. Really important that you get in there and share a little bit about what you thought was good about this presentation, what you liked most, what you what you didn't like, what you would have liked to hear. Um, if you did not complete surveys for any of the other sessions that you went to, that it's going to be the same exact link for all. There's a drop-down box. If you pick the session that you went to, um, really, really important that you do that. I really want to give all of our presenters some wonderful feedback so they know exactly um, what our students and guests had to say, so they'll be encouraged to present again next year. Okay, I want uh, them to continue to be encouraged. The way to motivate them is to give them the positive feedback from our students. So get on there and share your positive feedback. And I also want to um, encourage you to continue the discussion. Share on social media. Um, hashtag out there on your own social media site. So hashtag Ken Foster or share on our Penn Foster student community. And remember, if you have any additional questions, um, you can get onto that community and ask. I'm on that community three to five times a day. Um, that community is on my cell phone. Um, so talk about time management. I'm always on, always working. Um, I never, ever stop. And whenever I can, if I'm, if I'm bored sitting at the doctor's office, I'm making good use of my time going through the student community or um, doing emails to make sure that everything gets done on time. So um, please continue the discussion. And thank you, thank you, thank you for a wonderful, wonderful week. Have a great, great night, everybody.